Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will. I'm joined by my co-host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. What's up, everybody? I'm really excited to be here once again with you. That it? That's all you got? I'm here excited to be with you and everything else also. All right, folks. Hey, we had a fun time last week, and we should talk about this before we get to the topic, because we got some some hot news, hot off the presses that some of you have seen and we want to chat about a little bit. But we did get the opportunity to go to Jack Daniels again. We went two weeks in a row on a Friday. Or just one week. No. Friday to Friday. That's two weeks. Well, to- you don't have two Fridays in a week. Y'all, you and James, the the geniuses of the group, kept saying it's twice in one week. It isn't. Because <laughs> you don't have two Fridays in seven days. Well, technically, two Fridays we in eight left days. No, late afternoon. Not accurate. And you still, there's a 24 hour period called Friday, and both of our trips were within that gray area. Actually, not. Actually, pretty black and white. <laughs> if it were. Uh, like a Jack Saturday, logo. if it were Saturday to Friday, that would be the same week. It wasn't. It was one Friday and then the next Friday. Right. So not one <laughs> week at all. Y'all are really bad at counting. So we went down to Jack Daniels and we had a fantastic time. This is our second barrel pick that will be... Um, uh, it, to bring, raise awareness and money for the Special Forces Foundation. The first one we did was Eagle Rare a few years ago. And now, something really special. Jack Daniels, barrel-proof rye. Barrel-proof. They can't. We've wanted it. We've wanted it for Everybody's so, wanted it. Everybody's wanted it. Yeah. Ever since the Taster series and then the limited edition, everyone has wanted more access to barrel-proof Jack Daniels rye. Right. And they have given access. And we went and we are among the first few groups to have picked one of these. So it'll be one of the first handful of barrels, like one hand in this number on one hand, five. Right. In that first five, give or take, Oh, we're one of the first barrels. This is what I mean. Like, we don't know specifically. Like six minus one, five? Well, I'm just saying we don't know when ours will hit the market versus other groups and- But wait- are pick. we the fifth? No, or are no, we no. actually the sixth. No, we're within that five. Is what I'm saying. You're really bad at like, especially bad at numbers this week. Like, I've never seen you this bad. Like, pretty bad normally, right? On the whole, but like one, this week, real bad. Oh yeah, yeah. It checks out within the five. We haven't even not outside of. We haven't even. Today's the first day of the week. I mean, unless you're your week, this could be last week for all you know. Protestants might say this is the second day of the week. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I think most people say this is the first day of the week. Or second day of the week. Monday is the second day of the week, no matter who you're talking to. It's the to. first work day. That's fair. Because you're supposed to Sabbath. All right. So back to all this. Back to all this. We went down to we Jack Daniels. We we got there pretty early. We went on a great tour. Uh it was you me, Bob and James and our buddy Preston Adcock from uh Oak and Thief supporter and and good friend of ours went along. And yeah, we we went on a great tour. Brandy is awesome. She's oh, yeah. fantastic. Our tour guide was nuts. I, I've always had good tour guides at Jack Daniels. They they have a good uh, I'm trying to think of a good word, like a bench, kind of like in baseball. They they got a deep bench when it comes to right talent yeah. on the tour guide side. But Brandy is got to be one of the best tour guides I've ever had. She was fantastic. I learned so much more from Brandy's tour, than, and I've been on how many of them and, and read books about Jack Daniels and all this, and and I learned like a lot of new things from Brandy. A hundred percent. 100%. Yeah, we've gone on probably five or six Jack Daniels tours. Yeah. All have been excellent. All have been great. The The bummer this time, though, is they're under construction with their still. So, like, there's no um, smells that you would expect from a distance yeah. or even inside where they're making the mash. You still, you still get a hint of the mash smell. Oh, 100%. Yeah. However, so you would think that that would hurt our tour no. a little bit. Not a bit. Like, Brandy just showed up, she talked it up, she crushed it. She also was able to, like, with the the mash tanks drained, 
was able to point out cool features that you'd normally not see of the giant 40,000 gallon mash tanks. Some people paid attention during that. Others did not. Like the turbine? And made a fool of themselves later in front of the master distiller. I'm not pointing any fingers what here. What happened? What did I say in front of Fletcher? You asked him if the turbine in the bottom of the, of the, of the mash tank, actually, you didn't even give that context. Well, I he thought just it was- said he said we have st- another still house over here, and you said is that why you got that turbine to push the mash way up the hill? Yeah, and I've never seen a more blank, like I have no idea what this person's talking about. Look, than that the look of the master distiller of Jack Daniels. I would argue top five trademark brands in the world. You got Coca Cola, Apple, Nike, Google. Uh, maybe Google, Jack Daniels, Harley Davidson, like those, those are the top brands, right? And this is the master distiller of that brand. And he, that's why you got them turbines. Is that to push the mash up the hill? Well, I mean, and this is in, literally, he just goes, Tur- turbines <laughs> after Brandy did a great job of, uh, of explaining, of explaining that that is when the yeast, uh, in the mash starts to settle on the bottom. There's like a giant bro. Boat propeller, boat propeller that kind of kicks on and and pushes the yeast back up mm. to reactivate it. Got and it. she actually went into a little bit of detail about that because we don't normally see it. And Grease thought it was to um, checks notes push the mash up the hill to a still house. Well, so. it um, I was getting some sexy B roll though. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you haven't yeah, seen it yet. I'm you not, haven't seen it. That's I'm not, fair. I'm not going to give you that one. <laughs> yeah, you you can't. Yeah, because you haven't seen it. I uh, I get it. Yeah. How about this thirteenth con? So all that to say is great tour. Then we went into the Motlow House where we've they do the non barrel strength picks in the Motlow House because they have to thieve it out and then proof it down. Mm. But if you're doing a barrel strength, they do it in one of the the in that old Rick House, the oldest Rick House on property. It's the brick one that you go into. You go. We were on the third level. We walk into the Motlow House and there's Chris Fletcher. Mm-hmm. I thought he was just walking around, you know, like saying hey to people, just kind of being present. Nope. He's doing the barrel pick with, with us. us. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was like I, what is happening? I'm like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. And so we went upstairs and it was just our team, um, Chris Fletcher, and then uh, two, two other people with the distillery, one who works with men who we've talked about before. And she was kind of our liaison that day. And then we tasted through the barrels. We 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 popped the bungs. Um, James and Bob had to do a feat of strength of hammering the bung into the barrel. Preston was smarter. He used the like waiter's corkscrew kind of to pop it out, and he right. he kept the bung, which is super cool. Um, yeah. So we did that, thieved it out, but then Chris Fletcher gave us a. Like, if you're a whiskey nerd, dude, it was the greatest, like, 30 minutes of 30 minutes. I have it all on science behind distillation, why he truly believes in the methods of Jack Daniels. And, and like, not from a like, because Jack Daniels himself did it. It's like, but down to like the molecular biology. I mean, one, he's a genius, yeah, extremely smart man, but just going into the, like the things that I was geeking out about listening to him talk about that you never hear people talk about, like even down to why their 12% malted barley is the right percentage. Because when you have that, it's enough uh, f- uh, food for the, the yeast. yeast to break down into maltose, which is a right. different kind of sugar than right. glucose and why that's a better sugar for the distillate. Like just, Fascinating, <laughs> right? Fascinating well, from a I standpoint filmed, of, of I filmed the whole thing. I held the camera for thirty <laughs> daga minutes, and I am going to use that at some point when you get mad at me. I'm going to say, "Remember that one time I held that camera for thirty minutes and almost passed out." I'm going to have to it, bring that one back. Precious, up. you think that one thing is going to save everything? Well, it'll help. No, it won't save anything. No, I was impressed because I actually thought you were just kind of getting some B roll and just recording the audio, and we'd use it somehow, but. No. After you're like, no, I, I, I recorded on. the whole thing, which is great. It is great. I'm sure there's a few times where you like, like, uh, shiver a little or something that we're gonna have to like throw some B roll over, but 
Yeah, I, other than that, I feel like I definitely broke something at some point during that, or the, like the water like the drop camera. Or, no, like the water. You may have dro- broke the camera a couple times. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, you watching? No, nope. no. Nope. Look, look for dings on nope. the body. No, nope. <laughs> look for dings. No. Nope. Um, don't, don't tell anybody. I won't. I won't tell anyone. So, all that to say, it was great that we're gonna get that barrel in, in the next handful of months. Uh, as you know, it takes a minute for them to. Fletcher to estimated. Process. On his normal workflow, and this could all change, but it was a couple of months. Yeah, like three to four months is something you should, you know. But um, that's going through uh, Oak and Thieves. So Oak and Thieves uh, will have an opportunity to get that. We want to support the Special Forces Foundation. Also, they're going to get a portion of the barrel to use for fundraising, awareness purposes like that. It has a very cool tag, kind of like the one we did for where it's the medallion on the Eagle rare. We did said the podcast for mm-hmm. special forces foundation. This time it says Oak and thieves for. So yeah, I love it. Yeah. So that's fun. So if you are interested in getting a Jack Daniels single barrel rye, one of the first ones, yep. uh, barrel proof, rye, Go to Oak and and join our barrel club. Easiest way to do it. We also, we also have, this is big, huge news. Yeah. Like an 11 year old, 13th Colony Rye. Right, right. We've got coming. We've got a Rye 3 toasted. Yeah. And and it, we got a rum coming at some point. Not as much. Not as much, but we do have some rum. Yeah. Rum coming. Uh, but also, if you uh, are, are watching this now, probably next week's show, we'll be doing this big announcement and big rollout, but I want to give you a heads up what's coming is that we had been using two retailers for Oak and Thieves, and um, it's always cumbersome, right? Like figuring it out, getting it right, a national reach barrel club ha- hasn't been easy. But we have a new partner, MASH Networks, and we are building out our storefront right now. So it within the next few days should be completely done. So that's why I think next episode is the big announcement and push. But if you were at Whiskey Weekend and you tried the Rye 3 at Dawn's out yep. of Fairview. There was only five bottles left when we got there. They sold out very quickly. Excuse me. If you wanted one of those, if you're an Oak and Thieves member, you're about to get an opportunity, and that's because we're going through MASH Networks. It is in transit as we speak. Yep. Um, and, and MASH Networks is going to be our one-stop shop for our barrels to yep. release. And, and not just barrels. Something unique and something really, really cool that we can do is that if there's you know an allocated product that we're able to get, we can put it in our store. If Will and I want to do a tasting with everybody and it happens to be three different spirits, we can load those spirits onto that website so that you can just order them right there and get them sent to you regardless of what you know demographic you are in. So that uniquely positions us and they're a really great partner that we've known um, – We've known for a couple of years now. We've done a couple of things with them, and we're really excited about MASH Networks. And what is cool is that instead of being like, oh, this retailer can only get their, these certain brands, and this can only get these certain brands, and this retailer can only ship to these states, and the, they can ship to all but three states, Alaska, Hawaii, and Utah. Mm-hmm. So if you're outside of those... Sorry, Jason and Natalie. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you, though. They, they've got to work around. They know. It. Oh, 100%. But, uh, but it, all that to say is that you will have a um, – you won't have to worry about that because they ship to all the states except for those three. And also, they because of the reach of their network, they are able to get even regional spirits. Like 13th Colony is only in five states. It's in Tennessee, Georgia, um, I think South Carolina, Louisiana, and Texas, maybe. And so it, it's harder for some people. We talk them up. We love them. I call myself the Tennessee evangelist for 13th Colony. And we want them to get bigger. That's why we're happy to be able to use the uh, the power of MASH Networks and the podcast to try to get some of these brands that we really believe in, that we love. Leapers Fort, that's another one of them. Um, and, and we're going to be able to get this to people that don't have access it at their local store. And another unique thing is that if they don't get distribution to Washington, DC, we can still get it. So we're not, we're not dealing with the, 
the hoops. Yeah, that's what I mean. Why with the regional players that are only in certain states, we right. the Mash Networks has a very innovative platform and, and way to bring it to the masses. So, all that to say, if you're interested in the things ahead with Oaken Thieves, with me, Grease, Bob, and James, check it out at OakenThieves.com. We'd appreciate your support over there. But more than anything, we know you're going to be happy with the whiskey that we're bringing you. So, check it out. Yeah, this past year. Think, let's think about it for two seconds. I'm sorry, oakenthieves.com. We had a Four Roses OESO. We got a Hogback, which is a very unique single barrel that was super crushable. Right. We've done a couple of blends that were phenomenal. I we think, got honestly, a Russell's. I think one of my favorites is the Penelope. Is the Elegance? Yeah. It's pretty dang It's one of my it, favorites we did. Yeah. Um, it sold out, by the way. I know. Thank you, James. Um, the uh, what was another one that I just we did two new lose, two new lose. No, the um, Russell's. We did a Russell's pick. Right. Russell Man. We did a seventeen ninety two full proof right. single barrel pick. Right. We've got the Rye Toasted coming out, which is the first national release of that. It was only at a local store prior to that. So we've got a lot of unique offerings going on. I'm really excited about it. And I hope you jump on board and, and dive in with us, man. We'll, we're getting the picks. Yeah. But we need people to help support us so that we can continue to do so. That's all right. Oakenthieves.com. All right. So this is the topic of the show today. One thing we've talked about quite some time is the, the unique and I would say negative feature of Kentucky um, bourbon law. <laughs> is that uh, Kentucky has a tax that they put on the barrels as they're aging. So it's almost a disadvantage to age up your product because the longer it ages, the more tax that you're paying on it. And that tax is due on an annual basis. People compare it kind of to a property tax. So it is an annual tax you pay on your aging stock. So the longer you hold it, the more tax you pay on each individual barrel. Um, t- as far as I know and have read, Kentucky's the only state that has this. It's been around a long time. It's not something new they introduced. But uh, a lot of people for a long time have said that this is a disincentive for, one, distilleries to hold their stock longer to make potentially a better product, a more re- well-rounded, aged product. But it also is a barrier to entry for... Um, younger, newer brands that want to get in the game that uh, are going to have to be paying taxes on these barrels as they age without being able to get revenue on those barrels until a future date. So here comes House Bill 5. It was We're dealing with lobbyists, Will. It, well, it, it, I mean, anytime there's any sort of legislation, yes, but. House Bill 5 was uh, approved by House Committee. I think it's been fast-tracked and I believe was actually passed by the uh, State House in Kentucky. And what this would do is it would gradually repeal the tax on aging spirits. And it starts in 2026, and then there's a 13-year phase-out until um, 2039. So that way that it's not a revenue center that just vanishes for communities for for localities that use the tax revenue this this property tax specifically on aging barrels um for for civic projects for things within their city um but that would that would help them transition over really if they start now planning a period of 15 years until that is fully uh realized and um so they're going down like a percentage basis Right, right. So it's not just turnkey. So eventually. they first have three years to get ready for it right. until 2026. Then it gradually steps down until 2039. How until long? It, it's God's green earth, are they going to replace that revenue? What are you talking about? How is the state or municipalities going to replace that revenue? Oh, I mean, that's up to them to find out. I know. I'm just saying... As a citizen of Kentucky, if I were one, there's already red flags. Well, you're a pretty liberal guy. so I'm not. I mean, if you're sitting here being like, man, red flags, you're lowering taxes on the thing I enjoy. Yeah. That's pretty, I mean, it's like. Do you honestly think no, I mean, we'll see that? Oh, the consumer? 
Yeah. No. Right. No, I don't think we'll see a, a price change, especially because of how long it, it trickles down. Yeah. But so you're so basically everything's a wash. You're in favor for new distilleries coming up to not have that barrier to entry. Yeah, and, and to even the bigger distilleries, which obviously they have a lot more resources and capital to pay the taxes, but it, it's an incentive for them to keep it in the barrel longer. Because if you have a much I love lar- that. if you have a much larger portfolio. Now, it's not the only thing in that calculus, but even a much larger portfolio, say you're Heaven Hill, and you're trying to figure out, well, eh, I'm going to drop this age statement on Elijah Craig 12 and drop it down to eight. I just Because think- imagine the, the money you're saving from an eight-year age statement over 12 just in the tax revenue that you're paying out yeah on property taxes every single year on each barrel they're still oh gonna, it's garbage dude they're still gonna have it's property garbage. taxes on the land that they occupy right they're still having uh all sorts of excess excise taxes that are on it the bottle of bourbon is 60 percent taxes the price in a bottle of bourbon is 60 percent tax stop it yeah so this is just one caveat this isn't like all right. of a sudden it's an untaxed commodity right. there is still no it's garbage I agree with you there. I just think that there is you don't, a better you don't think, solution. You don't you think there's a better solution than just repealing a tax over 15 years? Yes. What's the better solution? Over a certain age no t- no more tax. No, see I think that's even worse. Then that's in favor of the bigger brands. The bigger Yeah, but it's also in favor of aging out product like you said it was. No, but what about for the what about some, that is only and you said lobbyist, that only helps the people that can pay for a lobbyist. That doesn't help a that doesn't help the 13th colonies. 13th colony fortunately is in Georgia and doesn't have to pay this. Well, I'm just sitting here my two things were how how what would incentivize incentivize older product crap shoot of a situation that it was already in. We're sitting there in Buffalo Trace looking at all these freaking barrels and we're like, they're paying taxes on this crap right now. That's unbelievable. You know, on the fill, you know, and not on the bottles. They end up charging tax on the bottles, but um, sorry, that was a tangent. What was I saying? The You tell me what you're saying. I just think... You said there's a better things, way to do... And I don't know what the better way... What's the end? Aging thing? up and continuing getting revenue in that way. I think, I really do think, and this isn't a very conservative standpoint Clearly. at all. Yeah. Hang on. I just had to, you know. Get loose a little get, bit. Get my wiggles out. Yeah. So, the big boy distilleries. Okay. They're avoiding the tax, which can what? They're not a, what they're not avoiding. They wouldn't be well, avoiding they, it. They've lobbied. They, they've, they've lobbied to avoid it. We can say that. They have as well as I think other people that see that in general the bourbon industry brings in so much money for the state. Whether it be tourist revenue, so you've got hotel lodging taxes that go up because of this industry. That goes to fund the roads and the schools and the emergency services. The sales tax of when people come into the state and spend things. like It's not like all of a sudden there's no revenue source for these people. Right. And yeah, are they going to have to get a little creative? Or maybe do they raise... I don't care what they do. Like I mean, that's for the... I'm not... That's for the municipalities and things to, to uh, come up with. But having a a very unique, very aggressive and very um, hindering to growth, especially to your largest industry as a state. I think it it was bad policy and outdated policy for a long time. Yeah. I just, I don't see how a property tax on individual things that go up and over and is, is a viable option, especially if you want it it to grow within your, in your, in your state. I can see it impacting tourism in a way that the distillery just has a surplus. I mean, so much money. They are going to have so much money when they don't have to pay those taxes. I, I don't know that sixty percent. No, once again. Oh, retailer that is not, distributor. That's not sixty percent tax that on. That's the 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 prop, the excise tax the the aging tax the um, on the barrel. That is every tax on every bottle of whiskey. So if you pull up a bottle of whiskey, 
I'm like, I don't know if I want to hold those up. What oh, are those? A little dusty. So th- this uh, old granddad, it's the federal taxes, the state taxes, the sales tax, like every single kind of tax that goes into the pricing of this bottle. 60% of the price structure for this bottle is made up of taxes. Not ju- So it's not that you're cutting 60% price drop off of this. That is just one component in the 60% that makes it up. Okay. So, yeah, so it isn't going to be, it's not like all of a sudden the distilleries have 60% more money they're not spending in taxes. I want to do something. I think this will be a fun exercise. <laughs> Ooh, let's find out. I really do. Uh-huh. I want you to argue in favor of being in the middle. I'm not. I, have, I know I, you're not. I, I want you to. I, I argue. would never want to argue that because I don't. I don't agree with the concept of it. But what, what's in the middle? See, I don't. I don't see what a middle is. What your middle was was only in favor of the big. Uh, here's an argument. But I just thought about it. I thought about it for two seconds. Here's an, ar- All I'm here's saying an argument. Is there's a lot of smart people out there that could just think about it. Well, I don't want to give them any ideas because I think that it should go away as a tax. So you're saying benefit the big distilleries. I think incentivize aged product bourbon as it's using that alcohol. You interrupted me using that income Uh to bring tourism, additional tourism to Kentucky would be a way to, you know, kind of balance those budgets a little bit. I'm not telling the company what to do with their money. Right. But I'm also don't like the concept of they're already paying Corporate taxes, yeah. If they have a bigger um, profit, the state corporate taxes are going to go up in revenue. Mm-hmm. So the state themselves could counterbalance what they dole out from corporate taxes to. Right. But they are pinpointing their most famous and biggest state industry. They are discriminating against that one industry with a very unique. Tax. I agree. It's so garbage. So. Let's say healthcare. You're a for-profit hospital. Okay. You're not. You're not um, uh, subsidized. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not like a Baptist hospital or, or Saint uh, Saint Thomas. Vincent's or Saint Thomas that is like owned by a church entity, which are nonprofit entities. Scottish, right? You're a for-profit hospital. Um, we're gonna do a bed tax, a property tax on beds. Okay. Because. You're really innovative. People are coming from all over the country for your cancer treatment. I mean, and you've it, already this, got me. This I is got a it. this is probably not a precise analogy, and I'm going to get torn apart. It's pretty in the comments, good, though. It's pretty good. But it's it is say it say it is the for Tennessee because we have a large healthcare. So Centennial um, or HCA, yeah. they're they're one of the biggest companies in the state, one of the biggest employers. People come from all around the world to get healthcare from the, this company. Well, because they do so well and they bring such fame to our state, um, not only are they going to pay property taxes on the footprint of the hospital, but for every bed in the hospital, we're going to charge a, a surcharge. And so the more beds you have and the longer... Who's to say we don't already? I don't know if we do or not, I've but seen I think that it's line. bogus. I I've think seen that line on them. Let me go ahead and tell you something. An Advil cost me $80. Right. And so let yeah, me go ahead and tell you something. Is, there's a bed tax there one way or the other, that, Will. Once again, like I said, there's a way. I think uh, the tax on, on our healthcare system is called the insurance industry. But uh, oh. <laughs> but once again, Big not to say, but it's if they, as a state, decided to, and that's not federal, it's not whatever, not trying to get too political or into policy here that because we have a lot of messed up taxation, I think, in our country. But um, if you were to pinpoint one industry and one that does arguably the most for your state, has brought the most tourism, has brought the most things, and you have an outdated system and it literally is taking your product as it's being made mm-hmm. and taxing it. There, there was in one of these articles a um, – a, a quote from one of the lobbyists, I think it was from the Kentucky Distillers Association. So that's a, a interest group, a, a lobbying arm um, said something to the effect of like, you're not taxing a car as it's going down an assembly line. Mm-hmm. That's what this is doing, right? It, it's taxing the product as it's being made every year until it's done. What if you just taxed them on the engine that they put in the car? I don't know what the analogy to that. What's the engine here? Oh, you know, it's at a certain point you tax it. 
Well, one, I see, I would almost argue, you know, how you said, what if it's all the way up into a certain point you're taxing? You're saying flip it, flip it. Premium ultra aged products get hit with a excise tax. I don't think that's good, but I think that would be wouldn't be good for the whiskey connoisseur for sure. No, but I think the people that are aging it up to that level, the the companies do have the resources to make that calculus. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you said twelve years and above becomes an ultra aged product, and you put a a, a and you're only, a luxury tax, and you're only taxed per bottle that it fills. Uh, see, but then that, that runs into a lot of issues as well, right? Because right. if they're bat, no, if they're batched, if they're batched, right. Uh, things of that nature that I don't know, I think that could get hairy and become a headache for as well. I, once again, that, if you, if I had to argue a, keep some sort of yeah. barrel tax, which I don't think they should, um, that would be the more moderated way is that it is, um, and that's how they'd step it 15 years ahead. Just charge a 100% tax on the first year, and then that's it. So glad. Please, no one ever vote for Greece to do anything ever in public office. I honestly thought you were going to be so more tilted than you were. I appreciate that about you. You thought it was going to be what? I thought you were going to be tilted. What do you mean tilted? Just upset with me just then. No, 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 no. I'm I'm very confident you will never get elected. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> in, for, in sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I got kicked out of the mayor. That's the one thing that I uh, I sleep easy about right. at night is that Greece will never hold public office. Have you ever woken up, though? From a bad dream of me winning public office. No, no, no. That dream, it's one of those lucid dreams. You automatically, if if you ever win oh, you're just like, a nope. race, it's like, oh, this is one of those dreams. I can fly now. Right. Like I can jump in the air and flap my arms and I take off soaring like Superman. I'm in a dream. There are no rules. Yes. So, like an Outback Steakhouse. I look. No, oh. There's no rules. I thought you were talking about a back, um, an Outback Steakhouse situation we were in one time i have those dreams too about right. outback bloom and onion oh, blokes and sheila's oh. i love dude they t- people talk about the <laughs> bathrooms always automatically second oh yeah bloom and onion blokes and sheila's then you get the sweet chuck chicken sandwich yeah and the victoria's secret whatever it is <laughs> what's it called i think it's a victoria's filet oh that's it longhorn oh yeah 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 it is it is um, a victoria's filet Victoria's Secret is a lingerie store. I know, but what? Oh, Alice Springs Chicken. <laughs> Alice Springs Chicken is great. I knew it was a girl's name. Sweet Chuck is the sandwich form of Alice Springs Chicken. Greatest honey mustard known to man. At Outback? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they put on the Alice Springs Chicken and on the Sweet Chuck. Oh, you know what? It's pretty solid. Yeah, it's I do. Top, I do. It's a top five honey mustard for me. Second place? Oh, oh, Arby's. Oh, I don't go to. I don't go. No, to. it's actually Jim and Nick's. Arby's. Jim and Nick's honey mustard. Oh. Solid. Yeah, they are solid. I like Heinz. Savage. <laughs> Golly, I would never. I literally, <laughs> I questioned our relationship like yeah. immediately. Well, now you know how I feel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> On the reg. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. All right. So, Woo! so man, hot in your basement tonight. Hot in your basement. I know. Have we figured out? where we land on on this issue yes i i am you're pro. very pro house bill five and i look are you forward pro to 15 passage. years do you think that's a good amount of time yeah I, I think it's an appropriate amount of time to give the municipalities and the counties and 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 even the state that wants to help support um in different ways or reallocate some of the funds from sales tax or lodging taxes if they want to raise like a county can raise half a percent on hotel rooms, you know, like something like that. That's really unnoticeable, but that is for people coming to the state that's taking outsiders money and redistributing it to the state. Totally fine with the state. If they want to do that. Um, I just don't like the, the targeting of a business that employs so many people has brought so much fame, um, to the state and is there one of the things they're proud of the most of them targeting it with a very weird tax structure. And I know people are, I, and hopefully you're commenting below. I'll read them. I'll respond to them. 
I think it's a fun topic to think about. Right. Um, it's something that I think has been a long time coming. I'm glad to see it making some headway. But it, it'd be like the same here. It's like, I mean, we don't have as many distilleries, obviously. But like saying that Tennessee is suffering because Jack Daniels barrels aren't taxed every year they age. Right. They're a humongous distillery. And that's like saying that that we would have, you know, the schools and everything because Jack Daniels isn't taxed, we're in big trouble. Right. And I don't think that's the case. Right. So I think that I think fifteen years is a perfect amount of time. I really do, because we all know how long it takes freaking state legislation to do something. Yeah. So it's gonna take a while. Right. Different cities, it's gonna take a while. They've got to restructure how they do things so that they don't go underwater after this is all that. I get it. 15 years sounds about right. I am pro this move. I wish we could have figured out something in the middle because I will say that I do think in state citizens will suffer in a couple of ways. If they increase the tax on tourism and stuff, your normal hotels, your normal restaurants, like all that stuff's going to be affected, right? Sure. I mean, if that's the path they decide to go. Yeah. And, or if they do a sales tax increase, like, I feel bad for Kentucky citizens. I wish it was somewhere a negotiation. However, I don't, I don't I, think it was that, terrible. I don't think it's it, going to affect I don't think it's going to affect Kentucky citizens. I don't think there's one person in 16 years from now that's going to say we are 100% suffering because the barrel tax went away. And they even have a companion Not if that, but what They if, even have a companion House Bill 447 that will generate funds for the school system out of the state's budget reserve. So it's like they're it's not like they're just saying, all right, figure it out. Like there are other measures that they're trying to do as well to help compensate for that and and also to grow the industry and to not hinder it and, and handicap it with something that is um out an outdated system. All right. There's a middle option somewhere in there, and there's a lot of smarter people out there. But listen, the lobbyists have spoken. Oh, my gosh. And it is happening. <laughs> wow. That's precious. They are. Well, and I mean, they I'm glad it's happening. Yeah. It's not just the I'm, lobbyists. Here's either. the deal. If These are people that – these are companies that clear. employ a large portion of the state. 100%. And let me clarify my statement. Yeah. Okay? I am – all four distilleries being able to not be taxed on that stuff. Okay. That's so stupid. It never should have been a thing. Except for you're saying that you want them to somehow still be taxed on it. I, I think that the, that the whiskey industry inside of Kentucky could pay some tax on that. They do pay infinitely more taxes than most businesses in that state on the profit. Yes. On the profit, they still pay property tax on the land they own. Right. On uh, sales tax is, is a burden of the consumer, but it's collected by, I'm sure there's uh, probably taxes on the transportation between them and distributors, the end game, their product is taxed and we pay as consumers uh, a sales tax on that. Um, there are tax, like I said, 60% of the cost of a bourbon is taxes in general. So this isn't the only revenue mechanism coming from this. They didn't just right. get their entire tax bill cut. They got a tax bill they had to pay every single year they weren't selling something. Right. So that's, think about in, um, in, in any other industry, once again, you are, it, once you sell it, you have to pay taxes on it. But every year you're not selling it, you're paying right. taxes on it. Like I said, it's garbage. It's terrible. Yeah, but you're still trying to find a middle ground where they still have to pay. Something. They do. They pay a lot of taxes. I'm just saying, why couldn't you take it from like, I don't know, 47,000% down to like 2%? Because it's not a fair tax. It's not fair. Right. So, But you're still arguing they should pay it. Right? They could probably restructure it differently. <laughs> He can't. All you have to give say me, is yes. Give me ten. Give me ten, dude. No, all you I'm not to, that smart. I'm just trying to no, ask I'm the saying, questions of the people. No, you are. I you are you are arguing 
that they should still pay it even though you think it's a bad policy and unfair tax. Yeah. And you're saying they just pay less. They are going to pay it step down I over just, 15 years. I just want everybody to get along. At the root of it, Will, <laughs> at the root of it, I want everybody to get along. And and we're not getting along. I'm not not getting along. It's polarizing. I don't think it's as polarizing as you think. It seems polarizing. I, I mean, because you're just trying to find a, a sloppy middle. I'm typically always trying to find a sloppy middle. <laughs> <laughs> I go into Walmart, and it's like open season after midnight. Yeah. I found it. What did you find? <laughs> Sloppy middle. <laughs> I'm moving furniture tonight. It was next to the Nintendo and the electronics section. Oh, man. All right. You want to go to the 15? I would love to, Will. What do we got tonight? Uh, uh, we got Blue Run, Kentucky Straight High Rye Bourbon Whiskey. Hit the music. Cool. I tried to argue for the middle. <laughs> I know. That's fine. I mean, we had to have something to talk about. We did. And it ended with, I'm not that smart, <laughs> but I just wish everybody would get along. Uh, Everybody's going to be in the comments like, Grease caved. Yeah. <laughs> he caved. I think most people are like, why is Grease arguing for this tag? No, actually, I really want it to go away. And it should have already been away. But I do, I do, I do understand from the other side. I will say that the, I think it was smart to step it down over that long, but that's also the part that's going to hurt the bourbon consumer the most because yeah. then they're not going to adjust their pricing at all because it's going to be so negligible each uh -huh. year that it's not all of a sudden, let's say it's a 2%. All of a sudden they're not going to be like, we can eliminate all this cost and everything yeah instead you're gonna see the prices continue to rise <laughs> then you got inflation right all right and we're back from the 15 some say we never left will all right what oh, do we got? hang on hang on hang on you gotta hold the we gotta do this better than that uh we got blue run kentucky straight bourbon whiskey this is a high rye 111 proof this was batch spring of uh 2022 so february 14th this is a um this is a valentine's day bottle february 14th 2022 uh it is 111 proof from georgetown kentucky 65 percent corn 30 percent rye 5 percent malted barley i sneezed and here i'm just gonna yeah. react to you and i'm gonna cut all right um, yeah, so we got 111 proof. We got 65% corn, 30% rye, 5% malted barley. And these are, this is actually, I don't think I've ever tried a blue run. I just tried it. So <laughs> you just tried, yeah, you just drank it. I just drank it. So these are expensive, right? Like they do a bunch of batches. They are, they're beautiful. They've got always got a butterfly medallion on it. This one's got like kind of a, what do you call that? It's a rainbow ish. What's the word for that? Oh, man. I don't know what the word is. It looks is. like an oil slick. Yeah. I mean, you got an oil slick to butterfly. Yeah, it's yeah. like that was like a Deepwater Horizon butterfly. Patina. Yeah. A patina. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Matt Patina. Uh, but they're expensive. They're they're all over $100, these releases. I don't know what you paid for yours, and you probably don't either. No. Um, but I've, I've always had kind of a, a fascination by, but hesitation with because they are pricey they are um they've been an unknown commodity to me this is kentucky straight so we know that it's not mgp um but once again expensive yeah so let's dive in there's no age statement on here none at all let me go ahead and tell you what. it's at least four years though because it's straight bourbon right no age statement that's more of a talking point than actually age statements. Okay. Well, you just kind of know what you're talking about if you say that. Well, it's a minimum of right. four years. Right. How do you know hmm. that? Oh. Yeah, oh. I know. It's I know. kind of fruity. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. The nose sucks. The nose is not fantastic. The nose is ethanol city. It's very thin finish, 
but it's very fruity. Mm-hmm. I mean, fruit tea. Yeah, fruit. Yeah, yeah. fruit tea. That like used to Kool-Aid. be that used to be a thing in in Nashville. We had fruit tea everywhere and all the restaurants. that was bef- the fruit tea was nashville's hot chicken before hot chicken it was and now no one has it anymore right i don't see fruit tea hardly ever it's essentially like pineapple juice and a bunch of other juices and then tea uh-huh some had really good fruit teas some had really bad fruit teas right. i kind of liked the more tea forward i did too you know what Just was kind that of like sandwich a, a medium stop? sweet what was that sandwich place bread and company Jason's Deli? No, Bread and Company. Bread and? You remember that place? No. There's one on West End. There was one here in Cool Springs. It was called Bread and Company. It was a fantastic sandwich shop. Local place. <laughs> Best fruit tea. I was waiting for you to strike a pose. Greatest fruit I just felt it tea. in your tone. I need to Google, see if anyone's put their recipe for fruit tea up, because I'd make that. That was solid. It was solid punch. It is. It's, I'd put bourbon in that now. But now, understand that you're not making a healthy decision with that. Oh, the most sugar. Yeah. That's it's a spike in your blood sugar. A hundred percent. I thought it was healthier. At All one right. Point. So this bottle is $109 on keg and bottle. Yep. Um, this specific one. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of retailers do 10%, you know, upcharge. So on, a little bit over a hundred bucks yeah, uh, is probably what we're looking at. I mean... I'm torn on it. It tastes really good. The finish is very thin. I, it's a very unique bouquet. The the nose, you're right. And the nose is nothing. First impression, bad think impression. About. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when it you open the smells door. smells young and ethanol. It's when you open the door and your daughter's boyfriend that's standing there is wearing eyeliner. Right. Bad get, first impression. Ugh. But then he turns out to be a bourbon guy, and he's only 16, and then you're a little confused, but you're like, maybe he's not so bad. Because he, he, he knows good stuff about whiskey. We can't drink together yet, but give the guy five years, and maybe he'll be all right. Keep going. Uh, that's all I got. No, it's not. Yeah, that's all I got. What do you, th- what do you think about... Um- I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. You don't either. <sighs> I was trying to tie back in, but he's got a he's got an oil slick butterfly tattoo. Uh, Can't hold him against him. Can't hold him up on him. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hold him against him. He Can't hold him up on him. <laughs> um, bye bar pass. Man, I like one oh nine. I feel like we're getting loose. Yeah. You want to go live? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. This is gonna have this is gonna have to be a pass for me. Okay. And I haven't passed in a long time. Yeah. This is a seventy dollar bottle. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's seventy dollars. I would normally say bar, but bar on a hundred dollar bottle versus bar on a seventy dollar bottle. Yeah. That's a whole that's that's just a different step, right? Yeah. So I'm going pass on the on the blue run. Bourbon whiskey, high yeah. But take out that barrel tax, and it's probably like like one hundred five. We won't see it. No, we'll never yeah, see it. I, I think I'm. You know, if you can find this in a bar, I think it's a unique enough try. Pay some money for it. Try it. Even if you, I mean, it's going to be a decently pricey pour, like twenty five, thirty bucks. But it's something unique, and then you didn't have to pay for an entire hundred and. 10 plus tax, $120 bottle. I I can't in good faith on this one say bye. I think it's unique enough that some people may really like it. So go to a bar and, and try it. But I definitely don't fault you for your pass. <laughs> the the attack on the palate is strong, like really good. It hits your palate and you're like, this is crushable. Yeah. But it also has some complexity to it. It dies. Yeah, very that's the quickly. thing. For 110 bucks, I want an experience. I want a full nose to to Kentucky hug experience. Uh-huh. And I don't get nose or Kentucky hug experience. I get specifically a really tasty, unique palate, and that's about it. Yeah. But I mean, I get like strawberry. 
Like there's like bright, sweet fruit in the middle, and it's a high rye. It's fruit tea. And yeah. I'm telling you right now, it's like fruit striped gum. Yeah, you know how yeah. it like it attacks just, really good, and then and then it gone. Boom. Yeah, it's gone. That's what it feels like to me. Then with the nose and the finish being not great. Yeah, not good, and just that palate. That's why I went bar. Or sorry, that's you why went I went pass. pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that. And and you lose two out of three, man. You're out. Especially at a hundred dollars. Hundred and ten. Hundred and ten dollars. Yeah. In some places. Maybe even more. I don't know. I Googled it. It was like ninety nine, ninety nine, ninety nine, ninety nine. Yeah, but then Keg and Bottle said they were giving you a twenty percent discount at one oh nine. They said it was one thirty nine. So yeah. Well who's to say? There's if only retailers were uh consistent. Oh, you next next week on the pod on, on Grease's podcast socialism hour, he's gonna <laughs> argue for Federal control of liquor stores. Um, Stay tuned. They call them XYZ stores? Yeah. Are you an XYZ state? What does that mean? Federal government just owns you? Yeah. I don't know. X, bam. And then you go, why did that happen? Uh And then everybody's like, zut up. That's the worst thing you've ever said. All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Grease is past. I'm a reluctant Bar on Blue Run, Kentucky Straight Bourbon, High Rye from Spring Batch uh, of 22. That's 70 bucks. I don't own a bottle. Folks, check out Oak and Thieves to get information and to be a part of our exciting releases coming down. The Pipe? The Pike. The Pike. I mean, yeah, it's Pike, I think. I think it is. But with you there, I knew you were going to question it. And so I'm like, just change, Will. Just change what you're going to say and just say something different, like coming down the roadmap. Just say something different. He's going to question it. It's got, not going to be worth your time. You're going to question yourself. That's always awkward. So go to oakandthieves.com if you want to see what we have coming up. And that would be Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Rye. We've got 13th Colony. Uh, 11 year rye and we've got a an awesome rye three toasted that that will be within like the next week so oakandthieves.com join at any level we appreciate you in greece we don't know jack but we'll drink it